Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will, will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. At first glance, our readings seem to be focused on water. The Israelites are in the desert and they're struggling to find water. They complain to Moses and God, and they will die without water. In the gospel, the Samaritan woman and Jesus are at a well, and they are both thirsty. We cannot live without water. Without water, we'll die in less than a week. Water is necessary for life as we know it. In fact, when scientists were looking for life on Mars, what they were looking for was water. If they found water, it could sustain life. Water is absolutely necessary for life. <clears throat> it's hard for us to imagine the value of water because we have a tap. We turn on water and it flows out in almost an unlimited supply. But for the people of Israel, in the time of Moses and Jesus, water was very scarce and a very important resource. But our readings today are not really about water. They are using water as a metaphor for a much deeper topic, God's grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace has been defined as God's redemption at Christ's expense. For Paul, grace is God's giving of himself in Christ in order that 
It may bring about salvation for human beings. Grace is a gift of God's life within us, both the saving grace that gives us eternal life and the grace for the moment, the grace which enables us to do God's will in any moment. Water is a sign or symbol of God's grace. In our first reading, it is a sign of God's providential or divine care. The Israelites don't do anything to get the water. They don't dig a well. They don't have any buckets. It is a pure gift from God. In the gospel, the Samaritan woman and Jesus are carrying on what appears to be two different conversations. It's kind of like what my mom and dad used to do. And I'm sure some of you can probably relate to that. The Samaritan woman is speaking literally about water. Jesus is speaking spiritually. When Jesus is speaking of living water, he means grace. The water that Jesus is talking about is a spiritual water, God's life flowing within us. It's active and effective within us. It strengthens us in our weakness. It inspires us, comforts us, gives us inner peace, and sustains our joy. But most importantly, it unites us with Christ. In the second reading, Paul reflects on the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love, as they relate to grace and salvation. Let's start with faith. We are justified, or saved, by faith in Jesus Christ. By faith, we receive grace. In hope, it is by hope that we have confidence in salvation because God loves us and wants to envelop us in his love. As Paul writes in our second reading today, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Notice, God fills us with his love. He is not rationing it. It is not conditional. God is never stingy with his love. Like water, God's love, his grace, flows into our souls. God's life is meant to mingle with our life. We need to soak it in to absorb God's love and his grace. How do we do this? By offering our day to God in the morning and thanking him at night. By uniting ourselves with Christ in the celebration of the sacraments. By reading from sacred scripture. By being mindful of God's presence in everyone we meet. Everyone. Not just those we agree with, but even those we disagree with. Even those who we don't get along with. God is present in them, and we need to see that presence in them. By calling out to God for strength, wisdom, and discernment. By acts of service in imitation of Christ, who was the servant king. God's grace is a wellspring that is meant to continue to flow in our lives. It flows all the way to eternal life. At the same time, Jesus never force feeds the waters of eternal life. We have to be open to grace. God will never force us to accept his love and grace. It's available to us if we reach out for it. Our gospel ends with the Samaritan woman going back to the village and bringing the other villagers to Christ. She went to town to share the good news that she had found the Christ, the Messiah. When we realize the gift that we have in Christ, it should be our natural instinct to share the good news with those around us. As Pope Francis would say, we should spread the joy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus says to his disciples, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Well, who is the one that sent Jesus? The Father is the one who sent Jesus, and Jesus sends us out into the world. Jesus doesn't send us into the world empty or hungry. In the Eucharist, which we are about to receive, it is our spiritual food. In it, we receive Jesus Christ himself. With his life in us, we have the grace and the charge to go out from this church and do God's will in the world. And our world is dying of thirst. 
The love of God is sorely needed in our world today. In imitation of Christ, we can pour Christ's love lavishly on this thirsty world. If we're going to change the world, we must do it in love, with love, and for love. And if God is with us, who can be against us?